Saint Pope John Paul II. He doesn't have a beard, but still one of my favorite saints. Hey everyone, this is Bobby Angel with Ascension Presents. This was the Pope I grew up with for over two decades. This is the only Pope I knew. Um, and his story is amazing. Using all the different ways of my story to try to give back to God, John Paul II is right at the center of it all and really leading the charge of what a man of God looks like. So first of all, um, he really taught me to be not afraid. One of the, the things he says right when he's uh, declared Pope, he's up in the window and, and encouraging the young people around the world, be not afraid. I remember being, you know, 20 years old, clueless, didn't even have a major declared in college. I'm in my second year and I'm still just knocking out gen eds, not having a clue, really starting to feel a tug towards the priesthood, but really wanting to date and not having a clue professionally what I wanted to do. John Paul II was the, the constant, be not afraid, be not afraid. Um, don't be afraid to give your youth to Christ. I had some people say, well, go live in the world and be successful and then go be a priest later or go, you know, enjoy life, you know, live in sin. And then you can always come back to God at the end. It's like, well, first of all, it's not a guarantee. Second, that's awful advice. Third, I want to give my youth to God. I don't want to give him my leftovers. I don't want to just give him the scraps. Like I want to be transformed and go all in. And John Paul II was such a Again, as a young man, he just gave me that, that reassurance. Number two, this is a big one. John Paul II taught me the gift of the body, the gift of our sexuality. Um, one of the, the works he is most famous for is the theology of the body. Um, man and woman, he created them, a theology of the body. This thing is huge. This thing is intimidating, and he was a philosopher, and it's, and it's intense. But thanks be to God, there are so many people that have studied his work and brought it to a more accessible level for the common man. And I remember a friend of mine in college, she was just all about this theology of the body, this TOB, and we had, you know, 90s to that early 2000s VHS-tastic tapes. And I'm like, I don't get it. I, I wasn't ready for it. John Paul II realized the world needed this. And as a young man, um, and, and he's in love with love. He's in love with the Lord. He's in love with being a priest helping other couples. And, and out of the fruit of that ministry, he writes a book, Love and Responsibility, and eventually writes The Theology of the Body, which is meant for the Poland. Like, it's meant for the, his Polish audiences as he's ordained a bishop. And, but then the Holy Spirit moves and he's elected Pope. And so all of a sudden, this, this teaching that was supposed to be just for a contained audience, as he thought maybe, the Holy Spirit blesses upon the world. John Paul II knew that we needed to reframe our sexual ethics, not change it, not make a new gospel, but again, with new ardor, means, and expressions, evangelize the world anew, and, and through the theology of the body, through the beauty of, of human love and sexuality, John Paul II had a pulse on what was going on in the world and was leading the charge. And love is a beautiful thing, but we can, we can walk away with the distaste of love and human love and just thinking I'm, I'm supposed to use other people or I'm no, I'm, you know, just mutual objects to be used is how we can see human love when it's like, no, no, we're, we're meant for something so much richer and with so much more dignity. It will bless your life. And I'm so thankful for John Paul II teaching the goodness of the human body. Pope John Paul II also taught me to respect the body of Christ, not just like the human body, but even the body of Christ, the Eucharist. He would spend hours in prayer. He would spend hours like prostrate on the floor um, in just that deep prayerful state, he would groan, like the, the, the groans that St. Paul talks about, our bodies are groaning for redemption, like prayer wasn't just this like 30 second before meal, like kind of check the box, like that was, he was immersed in, in, in God, he was, uh, had a deep love for the Eucharist since a young child, and he would often be late for scheduled events because he'd be so in prayer, and sometimes they would try to, you know, get the Pope from point A to point B, and he's got to meet with dignitaries and make these appointments. But then he, he knows there's a chapel nearby. Like sometimes his aides wouldn't even tell him there's a chapel in the building or there's a tabernacle nearby. And he would just stop and look at a room and be like, and no. Like that's how close his connection, his relationship with Jesus Christ was. He, was, he, even, he even knew without being told like Jesus is in that room. Like, you know, this is worth getting off schedule for. Let me go see my beloved, the Lord Jesus Christ. And lastly, John Paul II really taught me how to suffer. And in, again, in a 
culture where suffering and pain are just these things we're trying to get rid of at all costs. To reclaim suffering as a good, as something that can be redemptive for ourselves, for the church, and for the world. Uh, from a young age, he lost his mother, he lost a brother. By age 20, he had lost his other brother, he lost his father, who was his steadfast example of the faith. So, you know, by 20, he's orphaned and alone, and his native Poland is being overrun by the Nazis, and then eventually later on by the communists. So he knew hardship, he knew oppression, he was put in a, in a work camp, he had to break stone while studying for the priesthood clandestinely underground the whole while. There was an assassination attempt on his life on the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. He is shot in St. Peter's Square before the Pope Mobile was all bulletproof and, you know, high tech like Stark Enterprises. It's like open air, there's an assassination attempt on his life. It comes, mil the bullets come millimeters from hitting his aorta. And the doctors said this is, this is a miracle and, and John Paul just has a deep sense of like, yeah, Mary's hand guided the bullet away. Um, it's not my time. He suffered. You know, he was an athlete. He, he was loved the outdoors. He loved canoeing. He loved hiking. And so later in his life when he's stricken with Parkinson's, you know, that, that's a cross. That's a cross when your own body is <laughs> betraying you. John Paul II said, listen, like, no, no, I'm going to offer my suffering. And it's, it's, you know, the young fit pope is aging before the eyes of the world. And in 2005, he breathes his last after the vigil of Divine Mercy Sunday, St. Faustina, who he himself canonized as an official saint of the church. He dies on Divine Mercy Sunday. It was, it was poetic. And again, this, I never met him. Um, he was just kind of the spiritual grandfather I had on the other side of the world. But I remember being a sophomore in college and crying in my dorm room when they said that the Pope had died. And it was weird after that, after again, over 20 years of you've had one spiritual father, it was eerie in the days afterwards, like we didn't have an earthly shepherd until they elected Pope Benedict. Mary became his mother from a very young age when he lost his own physical mother, a young Carol Wojtyla, later John Paul II, entrusted himself into Our Lady's arms. And so let's all do the same to tip our hat to John Paul II, pray for his intercession, read more about him, again, he will... Same thing when you read about an athlete or someone that's just really going after in business, you're like, you know, you're, you're either shamed and just reclining more on the couch and be like, oh, I'll never live up to that. Or it calls you out and be like, okay, I got to get to work. John Paul II has had that effect on me. I pray he has that effect on you, that through his intercession, we're able to grow closer to Christ and get to work for the sake of the gospel. From all of us at Ascension Presents, God bless.